And you know, one of the most common errors I see in my private teaching, I see it all the time, and that is golfers who take the club back and they have too flat of a shoulder turn and too flat of a hip turn. So right after this, let's get into Number one, all the dangers, all the errors that can happen once the club is taken back this way, and then how to fix it. <laughs> so stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, be longer and straighter all the way, the way to the green because it's just more fun to play that way, isn't it? So hey, if you're on the same journey, you wanna hit it longer and straighter too, then by all means, um, hit the subscribe button, uh, like this video at the end, but only if you liked it, and leave a comment down below, and let's start a conversation. So today we're talking about making a backswing where the hips, and especially the shoulders, turn too flat like this. So you see how level right now, my shoulders are. I don't have a lot of tilt here, and nor do I have a lot of tilt in my hips either, but I have a lot of turn. So this tricks people because it certainly feels like I'm making a really big wind-up, so it's kind of a little bit of a, of a mental trap that you can fall into. It feels very powerful, but you're certainly going to have a really hard time getting back to the ball from here. Now the two common causes that I see in my students and how they get to this position is, well number one, they've got poor posture to begin with, they're getting down to the ground the wrong way. So see if this is you. Check yourself in the mirror after the video is over and see if you don't use more of the sitting method to get down to the ball. You see where my, my torso is more straight up and down than bent forward and I'm getting down to the ground with my club more by bending at the knees. So if I am more straight up and down, certainly I'm going to want to turn flatter, more like a merry-go-round as I swing through. It's certainly going to be my bias. What I want to do instead for that, if that is the case, making sure that I'm bending here at the hips and not as much as at the knees. And I'm going to let my rear end get behind me to make up for the fact that my head is out over my toes and get me to equilibrium. So something more like this. Now you'll see if I just turn, were to turn perpendicular to this 30 degree bend, you would see a lot more tilt in both directions to my shoulders. Now the other common way that golfers will get their hips and shoulders turning too flat is if they just simply overturn the hips. So if I were to just turn my hips like this flat, See, my shoulders are going to kind of follow. Now, you see if I did it from this angle, and I just turned my hips, it also makes my head sway out of position, too. It kind of, see how my head goes over to my right foot? So, I have started off the swing by taking my body off the plane that I want to swing the shaft and the club head on. So, if my body is turning on a merry-go-round plane, I'm going to have to make the arms go on more of a ferris wheel plane if I want to balance this out. There's two or three really bad things that tend to occur once you get the hips and shoulders moving flat like this. Number one, you can see what would happen if I just turn flat. As the club wants to go way to the inside like this. So we're in big trouble from here. We're gonna have to make an, an enormous counter move to get back to the ball straight. See how far away this is inside this, this alignment stick that I've got to tell us where that shaft really should be. Like that. That's, not, that's no good. We're gonna have to make a big compensating move at some point. Now the second big thing that's gonna happen starts at the transition. And this is really kills us. We're just dead if we do this move. It's a, definitely a, a killer. Let's say I've gotten back and I'm going to turn flat here with flat hips and shoulders. But let's say I'm fooling the camera and I've got the club in a pretty good position here. Again, I had to do this by kind of lifting my arms outside the natural arc of the body. What's going to happen from here is the flatter the shoulders are, we're going to get the, the handle 
to drop vertically too much is very, very common. Um, you could, from a flat shoulder, you could also lift your arms over the top and get the club back around in front of you again, because it is too far behind you. Um, but a lot of golfers will instead just you see, this is usually the first move that comes with the flat turning shoulders is now this handle is coming down too down behind you. It's getting stuck behind you and the shaft will sometimes stand up as well to vertically like this. And now we're really in trouble because now we can only go out to the ball like this. We're going to get a lot of blocks and flips, uh, a lot of heel shots, a lot of duck hooks from there. And the third thing that happens very commonly as well uh, usually you get all three of these things in a swing once the person is kind of out, out of kilter with their hips and shoulders and doesn't have the right ratio of tilt and turn, but simply all turn, no tilt, for a more of a merry-go-round backswing. When the hips turn like this, the next move, especially for someone athletic, is to early extend or shove their left hip out to 8 o'clock. So if 12 o'clock was at the ball and 9 o'clock is the target, I'm going to push across the target line this way. And again, that's going to cause the club to drop in behind me. And I'm in big trouble with not only the path of my club being too far into out, but now the shaft is going to be tall. The handle will be way out of position. And a foot from the ball, your club face will be well out of bounds. Very scary proposition to figure out how you're going to flip this thing now in from here to get it going down the fairway. This is usually the pattern that ends up being a big two-way miss. So if you can hit some high blocks and then you can hit some duck hooks, yeah, I, I know you, I, <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> you get the block and the flip, and um, that's coming from this entire pattern of, of starting by turning too much like a merry-go-round. Now, unfortunately, the fix is very, very difficult for this. It's the reason is because the correct way of moving is going to feel incredibly foreign and very awkward at first. And so if, you, if you're feeling incredibly awkward, you feel like you're going backwards doing this, you're probably doing it right. What I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to make sure, let's get this measured right, I'm going to make sure that I've got the right amount of bow to start off with. That's going to help encourage the shoulders to turn steeper. But the second thing I've got to do is I've really got to get hold of the hips. The shoulders aren't going to go anywhere without the hips. So we need the hips to have more tilt or to be steeper. They can't turn on a merry-go-round. The swing plane of the shaft is not on the merry-go-round. It's not on a Ferris wheel. It's on kind of a tilted Ferris wheel. So there is some up and down, not just round and round. Now, what I'm going to do, if I just wanted to do this right, see, I need to start adding more tilt, getting my right hip higher and turning it less like this. So you see what I've done is I've tilted my belt line more and I'm turning the hips less. It feels kind of restrictive at, restrictive at first. But I'll just show you what that might look like if I were going to do it just a small pitch shot. It would look like this. Take you through what I've done. Watch how as I limit my hip turn and tilt instead, so my left butt cheek is staying closer to home here. You see I'm starting with equal pressure with both butt cheeks um, on the chair and as I keep the left butt cheek more at home and instead feel more of a tilt like a Ferris wheel, you can see that it's very natural for the club shaft to get right on the alignment stick going back like this. And then from here it will go up quite nicely like this. Um, that would oppose turning 
and getting the club coming back to inside or turning flat and then trying to swing the arms and separating them from the body in order to fool the camera. I always drive my students crazy when I give them the, the fix-it drill. That involves a little bit of over-exaggeration. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to let my left butt cheek come off the wall at all. And that's going to look like this. So now the, I'm actually overly steep. The club is actually outside the stick line pointing to the left. And I could swing around to the left and actually hit a little bit of an outside-in cut shot with a really nice divot. Now if you watch it from the front angle here, again, more tilting, less turning. We're just trying to even out that ratio. It becomes a feel thing. It's like, what does this feel like to do? It's going to feel to you, if you're guilty of turning too flat, it's going to feel instead like you're absolutely turning on a Ferris wheel. It's going to feel like your shoulders, your left shoulder is going straight down and your right shoulder is going straight up. Notice how straight that club is now, really on the plane. And it can go up from there and not get stuck behind me. Now when you overdo that exercise, I want you to see, again, let's revisit when the, you can see my head is right on the stick below here in the center of my feet. If I turn my hips flat like this, my head is now on the other side of the stick over my right foot. So the fix is going to feel like your head actually goes over to your left foot. It's not stack and tilt, it's just an exercise to balance out the tilt and turn ratio. So watch this now. Here's the over exaggeration. Very steep shoulders. Looks like my head has gone over my right foot. That is an over-exaggeration. My arms will not get behind me. I will not make a divot behind the ball and I'll get away from a lot of that club face rotation. So, so far we've covered fixing this takeaway so it doesn't go so far back to the inside. By the way, this will also be the reason your club gets across the line at the top. So if you're someone who points to the right at the top too much, it's probably because you're turning too much. You start adding some tilt into this and you'll see that club will not want to cross the line anymore. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit one a little more full speed and we're going to take a look at the direction that the handle travels in as it starts down in the transition. What you're going to see here is that my handle's not going to drop like it would if my shoulders were flat, but it's going to go out in front of me early in the downswing. So let's watch this one. So if you watch yourself on video and you see that club dropping more vertically than it should, now too much of this would mean that it's coming over the top, but we need a blend. This handle needs to get started on the correct journey. So important to get the handle path right on that needs to have some kind of out in front motion to it this way and not this way. And then the third really big error that we covered at the beginning was the early extension move or the eight o'clock hip move where I overturn my hips too flat. See, it's going to be really, really awkward to now spin back around that again and get the club back on line, get the body back on line. But what most people do, especially athletes, when they start turning flat like this is, instead they're going to push this way. Notice all the space now between the chair and my rump as I've early extended and pushed into the ball does not encourage my chest to turn and now we're really stuck here. Um, you're not going to play very good golf from here most likely. However, if I add more tilt and less turn and I look more like this going back, you see my left butt cheek stays at home. It doesn't rotate so much around the right. I'm tilting more, turning less. 
what's going to happen here now, it's going to be very easy for me to shift my left hip to 10 o'clock over here, or I'm sorry, 8 o'clock over here. We were going to 10 o'clock when we were doing it wrong, my apologies. 8 o'clock, watch how I'm going to push my left hip down the 8 o'clock line and actually lift the chair up. So more tilt, less turn, drive through the chair and lift it as I move into the left post. That becomes a much more natural motion. It almost seems like it's the only motion you can make once you have the right tilt to turn ratio going back. It's much more natural. It's flows going this way. That will certainly do a couple things. It's going to encourage your chest to turn more. So if you feel like you're never turning enough, this might be the root of the cause. This is also going to get your divot back in front of the ball correctly. And we're going to get back into a case where the club face doesn't have to roll so open to closed um, to hit the ball straight, where you're really playing with danger um, with, and a two-way miss. Let me see if I can do one more. I'm looking for the right tilt to turn ratio. So, hey, my mentor, Mike Austin, he always believed on putting everything, all the body parts, on the right arc. And they would have just all follow each other, and there you'd have a lot of congruence there. So I want the hips, the shoulders, the club shaft. I want everything on the right plane, because that, he believed, was the best way to repeat the swing and make the ball go straight all the time. So hey, if you've got any of those issues that I described, or those ball flight issues that I described, I hope you'll give this a shot. Give this drill a shot where you're over tilting, under turning, at least the feel of it. It's very awkward at first. That's why I was just chipping a nine iron about 50 yards at first. That's probably all you'll need to do. Do about a half a bucket of those and let that start to kind of morph into your regular swing just a little bit. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, benefit out of it. And if you do, I'd love to have you come back to this video and leave a comment. Give us an update. Other golfers that are watching would also love to hear how you did. Um, people like to be very encouraging on this channel and I'll encourage you as well. So hey, thanks for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. And as usual, if I don't see you in the next video, but I hope you watch, but if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway.